Hey guys, welcome to Skilllink. Facebook, Google, Twitter, Pinterest, and so on and so forth. These are a few websites that shape much of the information that we have in our hand today. All these major platforms have information that is uploaded by one individual and accessed by millions of others. With millions and millions of data being uploaded every minute, have you ever wondered where all this data is getting stored and how is it being made available to you? Well, we did too and decided to sit with this global network to understand how it gets us the information that we want. Let's say you upload a video on YouTube. First, this file gets converted into packets of data in the form of ones and zeros. After this, the uploaded file gets stored in data centers like all the other different files with a unique code. Since it's YouTube, the data is most probably stored in Google Data Modular Centers. These data centers have a huge amount of information. Cables that run around these different centers transfer information from one center to another and form the internet backbone. Next, when your subscriber attempts to access this piece of information from their device, this data is made available from millions of miles to them. This is again done by identifying the unique code. Let's say you're looking for skilllink.com. What the search engine looks for is an IP code. This unique code is sent up all the way to the data centers and then the information that you were looking for is retrieved and displayed on the computer screen. Interesting, right? But how does this happen? As mentioned before, the data centers have all the websites stored in with a unique IP code. These data centers are also termed as tier one of the entire internet system. They are then connected through optic cables running for thousands of miles under sea and on land to reach the service providers. This could be your local service provider. This formed the tier two of the internet structure. 99% of the internet backbone network travels under sea. This then reaches you through the ethernet cable on your PC. If you're accessing the internet on your phone, then it will reach the tower and then your cell phone via electromagnetic waves. This constitutes tier three of the network system and this is how we receive the information. But this was not the way it has always been. The precursor of the internet was the ARPANET. It was the basis of the internet and it stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. Developed in 1967 by the US Defense Department, this network was initially used to connect the University of Utah with three research centers in California. This connection was used to share information among these computers by packet switching, which is a way of converting data into small packets before sending them. This network slowly progressed to a 14 node structure in 1970. More computers kept being added to this complex structure to form a huge dynamic network system. As the network grew, it was decided that it would be impossible for the military to handle all the operations on its own. This led to the transformation of the then ARPANET to today's internet, making it available to the common public. In its initial stage, the map was laid down by creating a transmission control protocol, internet protocol based network called the National Science Foundation Network. This network linked all the supercomputers and formed the internet backbone. By 1992, the supercomputers were connected to almost 6,000 networks, out of which one third lied overseas. Today, over 3.4 billion people have access to the internet and new users are being continually added to the network. With such a huge number of people turning towards the online world, businesses are too turning towards the platform to advertise their products. This includes making websites, advertising their products. This naturally opens up avenues for those people who are skilled at making websites. Well, good news! Skilllink is introducing such a course on front-end development that will give you industry-based knowledge on how to develop the front-end of a website. Apart from this, we have other courses to help you become a full-stack developer as well. This means that you can create an entire website on your own. To know more, check out the link given in the description below. Well, that's all for this video. We'll be back with more interesting content. Thank you for watching and until next time, Bye.